A very good day to you. My name is Malcolm McPherson from Harvest Scotland. We have a heart to reach Scotland, the United Kingdom and beyond with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In recent days I have felt the Lord prompting me. Indeed I've had a few colleagues and friends calling me and suggesting that I maybe share some thoughts in regards to this period of lockdown that we've all been experiencing for the last two to two and a half months. And uh, I myself had been getting led uh, along that road. So I'd like to start today with a new series of things I'm just going to share, which I'm going to entitle Lessons from Lockdown. So this is Lessons from Lockdown number one. And the word that I'd like to use is declutter. I'd like to read a couple of passages of scripture to you. Uh, one is in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, considered him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that will not grow, grow weary and lose heart. Any other passages from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. As I've been sharing with friends and family and colleagues over the last while, um, there's a common thing that's been happening with many of us. We've been using this time to um, declutter many things, to do some tidying up. I'm doing a spring clean in home and house and garden. And for me, that has entailed spending eight days cleaning out my office. Yes, eight days. Would you believe it? I am sitting in that office right now. It's my study. In recent years, I've been on the road so much that this study has really been used just as a storehouse for dumping things when I get back and hasn't really fulfilled its very purpose for which I built it in the first place, which was to spend time studying and seeking God. And it was a place, my sanctuary, my place where I would come and read and prepare for whatever missions and whatever messages, preaching that I would have ahead of time. But over the years, it has just managed to accumulate a lot of rubbish, not just things and cupboards and drawers, but everywhere, the floor and in boxes, old cables, old um, devices, phones, video cassettes, audio cassettes, remember them, even floppy disks, all stored away, all massed for some day in the future, 30 years of ministry, the good, the bad, the ugly, the successes, the failures, all there, and I've had to be quite ruthless and Thank goodness I have a wife who is, uh, helps me to do that and helps me to get perspective. And Rosanna and I have been spending many hours here together over the last while just doing that, cleaning out this study, cleaning out this office, decluttering this place, getting rid of tat, getting rid of old stuff. And in these passages that I read to you, Paul to the Corinthians tells us that we must run the race as to win the prize. And we are told in the historical records that um, the athletes who would run in those games would strip themselves down, obviously to decorum. Nowadays to decorum, I don't know about those days and probably the less said about that, the better. But even today our athletes wear very tight fitting um, uh, clothes in order to stop the drag, in order to make them lean and to, to help them to do the very best, not to weigh them down, not to hold them back, not to cause drag. And they'll run the race or do their athletic prowess without hindrance. And Paul says that we are to have the same. We are to strip down, we are to declutter our lives. And I'm grateful to God for this time. I've managed to declutter this office, managed to get in and get rid of stuff that was causing um, just the place to be a right mess and to restore this place back to what it originally was supposed to be. The writer of Hebrews says something similar. It says that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. It says that there's a great cloud of witnesses watching us, that we are to cast off 
the, the things that hold us back to the sin that so easily entangles us. We're to declutter our lives. We're to declutter our very um, uh, beings, our lives, ourselves, not just the things that are around us like the office and everything else. And he says that, that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus. And that's the key for me. I'm talking about decluttering, but you can't just declutter and tidy up for the sake of it. It's for a purpose. And the writer of Hebrews says that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so this office has been decluttered, been cleaned out. I'd like to say it was fully decluttered. It's not perfect. It is better than it was. I got rid of a lot of stuff. Ask my wife. But as I look around here, over here, I have many of my old filofaxes with messages. And I have a theological library there that I often go to for references and things. Over here, I have my books that I've read and reread that have inspired me, encouraged me. Things that I get examples and illustrations from. Just over behind the camera there, I have my, my, my desk that was uh, given to me by my my uh, father-in-law that I, I use to, to do my writing and it's ready for writing. My wife and I are writing a book and I'm writing a book on um, evangelism, a study book on evangelism. And just this little corner of my office, I have converted into a little studio that I'm using even to do these video messages now. So my friends, I want to encourage you. I want to exhort you to declutter to use this time if you haven't already, to get rid of the stuff that's in your life, even physical things, even things that cause nostalgia. I have a lot of just sentimental tact that I had to get rid of, that was just sitting there to, to get lean, to prepare ourselves, to, to train ourselves, to get ready for this new thing that God is about to do and is in doing right now. We talk about the new normal. None of us know what that's going to look like. But what we do know is God is doing a new thing. It says in scripture, behold, I do a new thing. And we need to be ready. We need to prepare. We need to be decluttered and ready for that new time. So my dear friend, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping us in this time. And help us, Lord, if we haven't already, help us, Lord, to declutter our lives. Help us, Lord, to declutter our homes and our offices and our ministries, Lord, that we can forget what's behind and we can press on ahead towards the goal that God has called us, that you've called us heavenwards in Christ Jesus. And I pray for my dear brother or sister who might be watching this as I pray for myself. Strengthen us, Lord, and help us in these days to come that we might be pared down, that we might throw off the things that entangle us, that we might declutter our lives and that we might fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And may everything that we do and say give glory and honour to him in Jesus' name. God bless you, my friend, and I look forward to when we spend some time together. God bless.